the US and China could easily stumble into World War III through a tit-for-tat in the South China Sea, war game simulations have predicted. The warning comes after years of escalating tensions between the two countries in the area, one of the most coveted bodies of water in the world. Last week saw U.S. aircraft carriers sail through the South China Sea after Washington accused Beijing of a campaign of bullying. In response, China's Air Force held live fire drills in an unknown location in the area, firing more than 3,000 missiles at moving targets at sea. States including China, Taiwan, Brunei, Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, and Vietnam make claims to parts of the South China Sea, with various others keen to maintain access to the area's shipping lanes. An estimated $3.4 trillion worth of global trade passes through the sea each year, accounting for around one-third of all global maritime trade. The region also has large fish stocks as well as huge reserves of oil and gas. Speaking to the South China Morning Post, Michael Oslin, a fellow at Stanford University's Hoover Institution, said, You have all these contested islands, you've had collisions, you've had intimidation, you've had a worsening of relations. Neither Beijing nor Washington will choose war, but I am very worried they could stumble. Part of its strategy to claim control over more of the region, China has begun building numerous islands in the South China Sea, a tactic that has been strongly condemned by the US as well as France and Britain. Following last week's exercises, US Secretary of State Mike Pompeo accused China of a completely unlawful pursuit of territory in the South China Sea. China lays claim to vast swaths of ocean and many islands, but some parts are also claimed by the likes of Vietnam, the Philippines, Brunei, Malaysia, Indonesia and Taiwan. The dispute centers around legal claims to ocean areas and two island chains, the Paracels and the Spratlys, which are thought to be abundant in natural resources. Every year some 3.8 trillion pounds of trade passes through the dispute area and the United States has been joined by Australia, the UK and France in sailing warships through it to assert freedom of navigation. China has engaged in a massive military buildup in the area, creating a network of artificial islands, which it uses to assert its territorial claim. It claims that these are part of its national coastline but the United States and the Philippines say that doesn't apply to artificial islands. China's claim to a 12-mile territorial limit around the islands is not internationally recognized. Warships from the United States and China have been engaged in tense standoffs which have threatened to escalate into conflict in the disputed seas. In January 2019, China reacted with fury after the U.S. sent a missile destroyer through the disputed waters in a direct challenge to Beijing. China responded by scrambling warships and aircraft to intercept the ship, which sailed within a dozen miles of the increasingly militarized Paracel Island chain. David Ockmanick, a senior researcher at California think tank RAND, has been involved with simulating possible conflicts between the U.S. and China for 15 years. Describing the growth of China's military strength in that time, he said, So let's say it was 2005. If we were to run a scenario for 2010, 
Chinese capabilities weren't fully mature, and what you would see was a standoff, not a clear-cut victory or defeat for either side. But still there were surprising numbers of casualties and losses to the United States. The lethality of Chinese forces was growing dramatically. As we advance the clock forward, and start to look at the balance in 2020, 2025, 2030, typically we were finding clear-cut victories for China. Experts say that China would have an advantage in any conflict in part because much of its military equipment and tailor designed to operate in the South China Sea. Achmanik added that, no naval officer would trade a U.S. shipyard or ship for a Chinese shipyard or ship, but that China could outstrip the U.S. in terms of capacity because, they have such a large civilian industry.